In this short video, we're going to talk about a technique for evaluating integrals called change of variables, or simply u substitution. So previously, we have seen that there's a power rule for antiderivatives. We simply undo our power rule for taking the derivative. So when we take the derivative of x to the power of n, we're going to multiply by the old exponent n, and then we're going to change the exponent by subtracting 1 to get a new exponent. Well, if we undo that, what we're going to do is first add 1 to the old exponent, or original exponent, and then divide by the new exponent. That will be our antiderivative. And if I want to say my most general antiderivative, of course, I should have a plus c. Well, the change of variables or u substitution idea will allow us to undo the chain rule. So if we see an integrand that looks like it came from the chain rule, so remember the chain rule, we have the composition of two functions, meaning that we'll have an outside function f and an inside function u. And to take its derivative, we take the derivative of the outside, and do not change the inside, then multiply that times the derivative of the inside. So if I have an integrand that looks like that, then I should be able to say that, oh, all I need to do is find the antiderivative of the outside function, and that will be the antiderivative for the entire integrand. Let's look at an example. If I have the indefinite integral of 2x times sine of x squared dx, well, inside the sine function, I have x squared. And multiplied on the outside of the sine function, I have the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So this is a derivative that, or a function, an integrand, that came from a chain rule. So now I just need to find the antiderivative of sine, which will be negative cosine. Remember uh, that uh, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. And we can just do a quick check here. Anytime we find an antiderivative, we just check by taking its derivative. The derivative of cosine is negative cosine, but I already have a minus sign, so it'll be I mean, it's negative sine. So it'll be minus negative sine of x squared, then take the derivative of the inside, 2x. And that gives me my integrand, which would be sine of x squared times 2x. Now, it's not always to see, easy to see uh, that we've got something that comes from the chain rule. And we're going to see that this technique that we develop is more powerful than just uh, using it to undo the chain rule. We can use it in other situations as well. So let's develop a step-by-step -step procedure or method for using a uh, u substitution to find either an antiderivative in an indefinite integral or to evaluate a definite integral. So there's going to be a slightly different uh, procedure, uh, whether we're trying to just find the antiderivative with an indefinite integral or whether we're trying to find the value of an definite integral. So first of all, we'd like to recognize that we have an integrand that looks like it came 
from the chain rule. Derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And usually the way we do that is we look at the inside of the most complicated function in the integrand and see if that is multiplied by that, that function f is multiplied by the derivative of the inside. So here's an example. The most complicated part of this is the radical. And I see inside the radical, I have x cubed plus 1. Well, the derivative of x cubed plus 1 is 3x squared. And that is exactly what is being multiplied on the outside. So the process I just looked at is that, oh, I identified the most complicated part. I looked at the inside which was x cubed plus 1. And now we're going to uh, take differentials of this inside function. Now, we did this before when we learned about differentials. And it's very similar to the idea of the chain rule. Imagine if I were using I mean, sorry, related rates and the chain rule. So, uh, Imagine if I were trying to take the derivative of both sides here, say, with respect to t. Well, I would have du dt equals 3x squared dx dt. Well, with differentials, we just forget about the dt part. Uh, we would just have du equals 3x squared dx. Or maybe if it helps, you could also think of it as saying that, well, du by dx equals 3x squared. And even though this du by dx doesn't really represent the ratio of two differentials, we can always think of it that way. And so then if I multiply 3 by dx, I'll get du equals 3x squared dx. But once you see a few examples, I think you'll get the hang of how do you take the differentials of the u function. Then you want to solve for dx. So usually that's just going to be a division. I'm just going to divide uh, in order to get an expression for dx equals usually du divided by something. So then we'll go back to our original integral where we place our expression for u with u. So I've taken this x cubed plus 1. That's my u. And anything else I just leave as it is, except for the dx. Now I replace dx with this expression du over 3x squared. Now, if I can use this technique, what's going to happen is that all of the original variables, so the x squared, are going to divide out. And that's what happens here. And so what's left over is that, okay, the 3 divides out, the x squared divides out. I'm just left with the indefinite integral of radical u du. If I had any x or any other variable here, I would have to go back and try to do some more work, or I'd have to use a different technique. So now we just find the antiderivative of this new integral. And uh, that should be a familiar antiderivative here. We only need to use the power rule. But then I'm not done because I wanted to find the antiderivative in terms of the original variable, which was x in this case. So I go back and I go ahead and replace this u with my x cubed plus 1. And now that is the antiderivative that I'm looking for in terms of the original variable. So let's do another example here. And I'm going to make a, a, a separate video, probably two of them, doing more examples with these. So I look at this uh, indefinite integral. The integrand is x times cosine of the quantity x squared plus 1. And I'd like to uh, find the antiderivative. Well, I see on the inside, 
I have this x squared plus 1. Now, the derivative of x squared would be 2x. So I might think that, oh, that's a problem. I only have x on the outside. Now, I could repair that. I could multiply the outside by 2 and then divide by 2. That's just multiplying by a form of 1. And now on the outside, I have 2x. And uh, that, that is the exact derivative of the inside. And so now I could just bring the 2 that I divided by out as a factor of 1 half. and find the antiderivative. But with our step-by-step -step method, I don't have to worry if the outside is not exactly the derivative of the inside, if it's only off by a multiplying constant. In this case, the multiplying constant being 2. Our technique, our step-by-step -step method, will take care of that. I don't even need to think about it. So. I recognize that the inside is my u function. So u is going to be x squared plus 1. Take differentials of both sides. So du equals 2x times dx. Solve that for dx. Now make my substitutions. In the place of the x squared plus 1, I'm going to go ahead and write the u. In place of dx, I'm going to put du over 2x. Now, the 2 doesn't divide out, but that's fine. That's just a constant. The x's do divide out, and that's what's important. And so now I bring that 2 in the denominator out as a multiplying factor 1 half in front of the integral. And I'm just left with finding the antiderivative of cosine u du, and the antiderivative Cosine u is sine u, and I still have the multiplying factor 1 half. And I need my plus c because this is an indefinite integral. And I don't leave the u there. I have to go back and replace the u with the expression in terms of x, or the original variable. Now let's look at another example. Here I have an integrand t squared over radical 1 plus t cubed. My integrand uh, has this radical. So under the radical, I see 1 plus t cubed. And outside the radical, I have t squared. Not exactly the derivative of 1 plus t cubed, but only off by a multiplying factor of 3. So this should still work. Take differentials of both sides and solve for dt, since my uh, variable of integration is t. So I solve for dt. Now let's make our substitutions. I'll replace the 1 plus t cubed with u, and I'll replace dt with du over 3 t squared. So again, my constant 3 does not divide out, but I'm multiplying, in this case, by 1 third. So I'll factor that out in front of the integral sign. But more importantly, my variable t squared is going to divide to make 1. t squared over t squared equals 1. So I have a new integral with only u as the variable. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead. I know I need to use the power rule. So 1 over radical u. Is 1 over u to the 1 half power. And using the properties of exponents, that's u to the negative 1 half power. So I'll write that integrand as u to the negative 1 half power. I have a multiplying factor of 1 third that came from this 3 in the 
a denominator and that three came from the differential of one plus t cubed. All right, so uh, let's find the antiderivative. Remember our power rule for antiderivatives. First, we add one, so negative one half plus one is going to give me positive one half. I'll have to divide by one half, but dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, which would just be two. So uh, two times one third gives me two thirds, u to the one half, and of course my plus c. Uh, I don't leave it in terms of u, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace my u with the expression for u in terms of the original variable, in this case, u equals one plus t cubed. And so I'll have two thirds parentheses, one plus t cubed raised to the power of one half plus c. And I'm gonna leave it like this. If I had to do an evaluation, I would change the one half power back to a radical because I, it's easier to think in terms of radicals. But if I'm just doing an indefinite integral, I just need to find an antiderivative and this is a fine antiderivative. Now, if we have definite integrals, we have some choices of what to do in terms of the bounds. So one option, and this is appealing to a lot of students, is that look, we just find the antiderivative just as we did before. So we just ignore the bounds temporarily, find the antiderivative just like we did in the previous examples, then rewrite the derivative with the bounds, and then use the fundamental theorem of calculus with the antiderivative we just calculated to evaluate the integral. Now, if I'm gonna do that, it's essential that we finish our previous process and make sure that we've rewritten the antiderivative in terms of the original variable. We cannot leave it in terms of u. And then we're going to evaluate that definite integral. And when we're doing the evaluation, we don't need the plus c. Uh, our, before, when we find a general antiderivative, yes, we need a plus c. But if we're going to do an evaluation, we don't need the plus c. So well, let's look at an example. I'm going to find the definite integral from zero to two of y squared times radical one plus y cubed dy. So I'm just going to follow the process I did before. I'm going to temporarily leave off the bounds. I'm just going to find the indefinite integral, the antiderivative. So my inside function is one plus y cubed take differentials of both sides. And I see that now, once I take differentials of both sides, I have three y squared, which is almost what I have on the outside. It only differs by this multiplying constant of three. So that's how I know that this technique is going to work. I solve for dy. Now make my substitutions, replace the one plus y cubed with u replace the dy with du over 3y squared. And I get the further validation that this is going to work because the y squared divide to make one. I have y squared over y squared, which makes one. I do have a one over three, which I'll factor out in front. And I'll rewrite radical u as u to the power of one half because I know I need to use the power rule for antiderivatives. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll add one, that gives me three halves in my new exponent. Divide by three halves, that's the same as multiplying by two thirds. And I still have this multiplying factor of one third, which was outside the integrand. 
and simplify that. And most importantly, I have to replace the u with the original expression one, one plus y cubed. All right, now I'm going to do the evaluation. Um, because I'm going to do the evaluation, uh, you know, thinking in terms of fractional powers is um, difficult. So I'm going to rewrite the fractional power three halves as being radical one plus y cubed and that whole thing raised to the power of three. Remember with fractional exponents, the bottom number tells me the index into the radical. So two means square root and the top number is going to be the exponent, which is outside the radical expression. So if I put the bounds back in, I know the antiderivative now of y squared radical one plus y cubed. So I'll write that. I don't put the plus c. I just write my expression for the uh, antiderivative and perform the evaluation. First, replace the y with my upper bound. That'll give me two cubed, which is eight. Eight plus one is nine. So I'll need to take the radical of nine and then cube that. Subtract off. Now I put in the lower bound. So I'll have one plus zero cubed. So that's just going to be radical one. And then I'll have to cube that whole radical expression. And each one of those terms has this multiplier two nights. So I do the arithmetic carefully. Um, radical nine is three, three cubed is 27. Don't have to worry about the one. Uh, and the two ninths is, is a common factor. So just to make things simple, let me just factor out the two ninths. And I wind up with 52 over nine. So again, let's just review. What did we do? We first took the bounds of integration off the integral and found the antiderivative with the new indefinite integral. And there's nothing new there. It's exactly what we did before. Once we found that antiderivative, we performed the evaluation. And the only thing we need to remember is that when we do the evaluation, we don't need the plus C. But there's another option, which many times is simpler. And it's an option that I prefer not all the time, but most of the time. We're going to go ahead and do the substitution. So we're still going to find u. We're going to find the differentials. We're going to solve for dx. Uh, but then we're going to do an extra step. And we're going to rewrite the bounds in terms of u. So the first step is to write all of the integrand and the differential in terms of u. Now we're going to rewrite the bounds in terms of u. So now we have a new definite integral with everything in terms of u, the differential, the integrand, and the bounds. And so at this point, I don't need to even think about uh, the original variable. I just find the antiderivative. I keep it in terms of u. And I perform the evaluation using the new bounds, which are written in terms of u. So let's look at the, our same example that we just did using this technique. So I still say that u is my inside function. I still take differentials of both sides. So du is 3y squared dy. And now I'm going to do an extra step. I'm going to look at each of my bounds. So looking at the lower bound, which is 0, but it's y equals 0. So when y equals 0, I go over to my expression for u and replace 0 in for y. I'll see that u equals 1. And again, to emphasize that came from u equals 1 plus 0 cubed, which just equals 1. 
So now let me do the substitution with the upper bound. So the upper bound in the original integral is 2. That must mean that y equals 2. So let me go to my substitution here. u equals 1 plus y cubed. So when y equals 2, u is going to equal 1 plus 2 cubed. That just comes from this substitution right here, which is going to be 1 plus 8. And so I'll have u equals 9. So now I'm going to replace everything in my integral, including the bounds. So I'll replace the 1 plus y cubed with u. I'll replace the dy with du over 3y squared. And the y squareds are going to divide out. And I'll replace my old bounds of integration, which were written in terms of y, that was y equals 0 and y equals 2, with my u bounds. So this is u equals 1 and u equals 9. And now continue. So the y squared divides out. I have to bring out the 1 third as a multiplying factor. And now I just evaluate this definite integral, which is written in terms of u. Everything is in terms of u. So I'll use the power rule to find the antiderivative. And I'm going to evaluate that from 1 to 9, which are my new bounds, which are in terms, again, of u. That is u equals 1 and u equals 9. So I'll have this 2 ninths, and I'll replace uh, the u with 9, and minus 2 ninths, and I'll replace the u with 1, and just work that out. Remember that 9 raised to the power of 3 halves, that's going to be uh, radical 9 cubed. That gives me my 27. Radical 1 cubed is just 1, and doing the arithmetic, I get the same answer as I had before. So I'm going to make a follow-up video, probably two of them, with more examples. But you can see how we can use this U substitution, very powerful technique, to help evaluate integrals and find antiderivatives.